Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Tabernacle Baptist Church time of devotion. Let's pray, shall we? Our gracious, heavenly, loving Father, we thank you again that we can come into your holy presence on this day. Lord, we come knowing that we are sinners, but if we have accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Saviour, we are coming as saved sinners because Jesus died for our sins on the cross of Calvary and he conquered death, he rose from the grave, uh, he was seen by many before ascending into heaven and we know that even now he is interceding for each and every one of us at your right hand in heaven and so we thank you for our wonderful saviour we thank you that you loved us so much that you allowed jesus to come into the world to die for sinners such as us we thank you for the gift of the holy spirit who is our guide and our comforter and as we approach your word this morning we ask lord that you will speak to us in a very special way uh, that you will implant in our hearts and our minds uh, that which you want us to remember and to apply uh, to our daily walk with you. And so, Father, come with us now, because we ask these things, as always, in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. <clears throat> I'm reading this morning from uh, the first book of John, uh, chapter 4 beginning to read at verse 7. Jo uh, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Well, may God add his blessing to that reading of his word this morning. Uh, in particular, uh, the text which I have chosen is verse 18. There is no fear in love, 
But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The first book of John seems to assume that the reader is familiar with the gospel. Rather than restate these facts, John is concerned with building confidence in Christian believers. At the same time, his words encourage believers to examine their own lives for signs of their relationship with Christ. This letter also challenges false teachers and their incorrect claims about Jesus. Many themes here are shared with the Gospel of John. Turning to chapter 4, it emphasises the way God's love removes the natural human fear of rejection. Fear is a punishment of its own, and those who do not believe have reason to fear judgment. Believers, on the other hand, have confidence. Not only has Christ forgiven our sins, but he gives us God's love. Following in this love leads to acceptance, which leads to confidence, driving out fear. This passage is the key section of John's letter, explaining how confidence in the life of a believer ought to be accomplished. There are two major ideas contained in chapter 4. The first is that believers ought to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. The second theme is that God both loves us and God is love, leading believers to love one another. The first book of John chapter 4 begins with the command to test spiritual claims, since not all teachers are true to the faith. Christians are never instructed to believe just because. In fact, we are often warned to carefully consider before we trust any particular message. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 tells us this. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. John was concerned that false prophets and false teachers or teachings would deceive his uh, readers or hearers. Uh, John uh, chapter 4 verse 2 gives the test for spirits which actually come from God. These are those that acknowledge Jesus Christ's real incarnation, that he came to earth in the flesh. John adds that believers overcome the powers in this world because of God's Spirit with them and within them. It says in verse 4 of chapter 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The world here refers to godless humanity. A worldly attitude listens to unbelievers and ungodly spirits and ignores God. 
The second major section ref returns to the idea that God is love. John teaches that biblical love is a sign of being born of God and knowing God. He states emphatically that believers are to show their love for God by loving one another. We see that in verses 7 to 12. Love not only demonstrates God's presence in our lives, it serves as evidence to the rest of the world. Love is how the world is meant to see God, even though they cannot do so physically. And then verse uh, 13 right through to verse 21 can be summarized uh, by the final verse. Anyone who claims to love God must prove it by loving his brother. John's teaching repeatedly emphasizes the fact that a person cannot claim to love God yet hate others. As it is made clear in chapter 3, hate is always from a demonic source. Those who hate are not abiding in Christ. Believers are children of God and brothers and sisters of one another. As family, they are to love one another according to the commandment of God. And then verse 18 offers an important perspective on the relationship between love and fear, namely that godly love and worldly dread are incompatible. God's perfect love drives out fear of being accepted by him. Other places in scripture speak of fearing God in the sense of awe, respect, or even trembling before him. Here, however, John's focus is on anxiety over whether or not God will truly love and forgive us. Believers who follow God's example of love have no reason to fear that God will not accept them. His perfect love removes the need of this fear. God is love shows perfect love and places love in the hearts of those who believe. God loves you and he loves me. How are you going to respond to that love today? Perhaps God is speaking to you at this very moment and he's saying that he wants to come into your heart and your life. Well, why not accept him today as your personal Lord and Saviour? If you feel that God is moving through his Holy Spirit to urge you to come into a communion, a new loving relationship with him, then why not pray this very simple prayer with me now? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins 
and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my personal Lord and Saviour. Amen. Well, if you've prayed that prayer this morning, God bless you. Jesus has come into your heart and your life. And we always advise that you need to tell someone straight away. And so why don't you get in touch with the pastor or one of the leaders of your local gospel preaching church? And they will be delighted to welcome you into uh, their fellowship and to help you and to nurture you in your faith. And also, uh, if you've prayed that prayer, once knowing Jesus as Lord and Saviour, but they've drifted away, well, again, why not make this a new day? A new day when Jesus has come back into your heart and your life, and you are ready to follow him and to serve him. Again, you tell someone, tell uh, your local gospel preaching church and of course if you live in the Newbridge area you're always welcome to contact our pastor the Reverend Peter Cho or one of the leaders and we will be ready and uh, praying for you uh, that you come and speak to us and that we will be able to help you and to love you and to nurture you uh, and to encourage you and to fellowship with you uh, in the faith. God bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today again. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings that you have poured out down through many years on each and every one of us. Help us not to take them for granted. We thank you for our family and our friends and our neighbours and the community in which we live. We ask, Lord, that you will, in particular, make us mindful of the wonderful sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for each and every one of us on the cross of Calvary. And now we can look forward to a full life in communion with you and at the end of this earthly life we can also look forward to a great the great joy of being with you in glory for eternity lord thank you for your word thank you uh, for your church which is the body of christ on earth and thank you for the freedom that we have to be able to worship you day by day. <clears throat> Lord, we do lift up this country to you. We pray for the United Kingdom and we particularly pray for this lovely land of Wales. And we ask, Lord, that you will give wisdom and understanding and compassion to our leaders. We pray for all who are working in the health service and in the social care sector at this time. We ask, Lord, that you will be um, with those who are struggling today, some who are going through the valley of the shadow of death, others who are very sick in hospital, and others who are fretting about loved ones who are not well. Lord, help them. And Lord, Bless them and give them a sense of peace and assurance that you are with them today. And then finally, Father, we pray for ourselves that as we go about our daily business today, that we will be ever conscious of your presence with us, guiding us and helping us to do that which is right in your eyes. We ask all these things, as always, seeking the forgiveness of our many sins. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen. <laughs>